So now I need a way to select, do I want the real production you know, data service which is going to hit the cloud or do I want the test one? So to do that, let's go into the program and we are going to ask the user, what do you want to do now? So let's add a choice and I'm going to say, hey, press one if you want to use a test service, press two if you want to use a real service, okay? Then the user can read, can, can enter here the parameter. Now, if he chooses one, I'm going to use here this IOC container to register the test data service. And basically what I'm saying here is every time that somebody asks for an iData service, please give me the test data service. And every time, if the user chose two, every time that somebody asks for an iData service, please give me the real life data service. And that's the dependency injection, if you want, that's the, um, the IOC container strategy that I mentioned before. Now I'm using simple IOC to do that. This is an MVVM Lite component. So how do I use it? How do I add it to my project? Well, it's on NuGet, so I can add it to NuGet. But remember, we just added it before. So I can go and say, let's add a reference. And then if I browse here, I'm into bin debug net standard one zero, that's the folder that I had before. And then I'm going to add it directly. Okay, or I could add it through NuGet, like I mentioned before. And now I have my component which is running here, that's cool. Now the last thing I need to do is get the first and the second number. So I'm going to add this here, all right? Then I'm going to compute. And now just to make things a little bit more interesting, I, I decided, okay, I'm going to use another program to do the computation, okay? I'm going to just separate things a little bit better. So let's generate this class in a new file. And now the beauty of the IOC container is that I can go in this other program and I can say, now I have no idea what version of iData service I'm going to use. Is it the test one? Is it the real one? I don't care. I'm just getting an iData service from the IOC container and I'm going to call get result. I don't know where it's going. So that's kind of the strategy. Now in a real life application, you have probably multiple components. You have one component which registers things. You have another one which uses it. Okay, here it's all in the same program, but you get the ID, okay? It's a cache where you get things from. Okay, so I just need to add a few namespaces, simple IOC and iData service. And now basically I'm ready to go. So let's run this application. So now I'm on Windows, I'm going to run that. It's going to go into a command line application. Okay, let's try to use a real service. Let's add the first operand, second operand. After a short wait, the result is 42 which is correct because it's the answer to life, the universe and everything. Huh? So we know that it's correct. Nice. Let's run it again. So now I'm going to use the test service. Let's enter first operand, second operand. And now it says, I don't know how to count. I'm just a test program, which is correct. Very good. So now that's cool. But why did I do all this work? Okay. It's because I have a .NET Core application now. I can run it on Linux. Why not? And so the really cool thing, Let's take this app. I'm going to publish it. I'm going to publish it to a folder. Sounds good, all right. So basically I'm just preparing it if you want for consumption. I'm going to go here in my folder, release.NET Core app, publish. Let's take this folder. This is where I have everything I need to run the application and I'm just putting it in C. And now I can go to the Windows Store, and here on the Windows Store, you have the possibility to run Linux on Windows directly, okay? So this is called the Windows subsystem for Linux. For example, I have Ubuntu here, which I installed, so I'm going to launch that. Now I'm running Ubuntu on Windows, okay? I can navigate to slash mnt, by the way, forward slash, because I'm on, Win I'm on Linux, okay? So slash mnt slash c slash publish, and then I can say .NET Core with MVVM DLL. And I have the exact same code, but this time using HTTP client, using MVVM Lite, I'm hitting an Azure function in Linux using the exact same code. And so that's the beauty of .NET standard. It is running as is on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Make sense?